Welcome, everyone. So grateful you're here with us. Wow, what a huge topic we have for this <laughs> retreat. <laughs> this is a juicy topic because it, there's so many nuances to it, and and there are a lot of questions. Again, we we ask you to write in your your questions and your prayers and your experiences and yep, we have another book here. <laughs> so we, we've started to go through it. But always with Friday night, we just want to really welcome everyone because um, yeah, we're just going to take this journey together this weekend and really go into guidance in a very practical way. And I guess for many of you who have A Course in Miracles as your practice, you might say, in terms of spiritual practice, that guidance is a really a central piece of working with A Course in Miracles. There are a number of pathways to God. Some of them are non-dualistic. Uh, some of them involve meditation, uh, long periods of meditation. Some of them involve uh, adherence to uh, rituals. I think a lot of monasteries and convents uh, traditionally have involved lots and lots of rituals where the, the uh, monks and the nuns wake up sometimes at four or five in the morning and then do a huge amount of rituals throughout the day, um, usually with, with their attention on, on God, even though their mind is drawn into all kinds of uh, other things, you might say distracting ego thoughts. But the pathway of A Course in Miracles is definitely a pathway of learning to be in touch with your higher self, the Holy Spirit, your intuition, your guidance. And this is something that you might say is designed to save time. So that's why it's so important on the pathway of, of A Course in Miracles, because there, you're being asked to go through a a transformation of consciousness and in, you could say in which you start off being very, very identified with the body, heavily invested in the body and the things of this world. And then you go through a phase where you start questioning and raising beliefs into awareness to be questioned. And then as you question the belief system in the mind, including some questions of beliefs that seem to be even unconscious as they're flushed up into awareness, then you do go through a phase of, we call it, being done through. And so you go from being heavily invested in the doer to going done through, and then as you go much further with being done through, the, you might say you, you go beneath the ego's thoughts of identification with the world and the body and you sink down toward the light and then you are literally undone from the ego and are able to merge with the light. So that's the context for it and oftentimes we could say just at the beginning, a lot of times people think of guidance so associated with the future. What am I going to do with my life? Holy Spirit, Jesus, what are you going to make of me? Where are you going to take me? Will I even be able to recognize myself when you're through with all this guidance? And it's very associated with the future, but I think we want to start to have you relax a bit about that because actually it's not like uh, the secret or law of attraction where, you know, you're just going to have Jesus and the Holy Spirit use your mind to manifest a better future than your past. You know, that's kind of a simplistic way of thinking of guidance as if it applies to, oh, if I learn to be guided, then the Holy Spirit will give me a better world in the future than I had in the past. It, it could be thought of as, as a, a world where you, you learn less and less to to compare, to contrast, to analyze, and you move towards acceptance. But it's not like you're trying to manifest a specific future and you need guidance to fuel your manifestation of a better future. 
actually all guidance is designed to take you to the holy instant, to take you into the present moment, to take you into the keyhole back into eternity. So then you can relax a bit. Oh yeah, okay, the guidance is for, for me to become fully present, not about generating a better future. Uh, that that self-concept that you have believed you are, the body, personality, and the, the cosmos, you know, may seem to undergo some seeming shifts and changes, but ultimately it's just taking you to like a, a leap-off point to go to the light and to take you into the present moment. So that, I just wanted to say that up front because a lot of times people put so much pressure on themselves about getting guidance for the future. Uh, and, and I'm saying, no, no, relax. This guidance is just totally designed to take you into the, the holy instant. That's, that's the point of it. And it's not about making the world a better place. It's not about saving the world as if there's a, an external world that needs to be saved. It's actually bringing your mind back to its natural condition of, of peace and stillness. A, a, a son of God can only be happy in the environment in which the son was created. Well, that's heaven. So it's great when Jesus tells us, listen, I'll make it easy for you. You can only be purely happy in heaven because you're a child of God and you were created as spirit and you're happy when, you're, when you know your spirit. As long as you still are identified with the images, you, you know, there's going to have to be an undoing and we were talking at the beginning how even this undoing of the ego, Jesus has six stages of the development of trust, because trust is, is key in letting the ego go. But four of the six stages are challenging, difficult, um, disorienting. Uh, you know, four of the six stages are difficult, which gives you kind of a little bit of a of an idea how it's going to feel at times like a dismantling going on and you can feel a lot of confusion and disorientation with this dismantling but Jesus says don't worry it's it it will be much shorter this period of confusion and disorientation than the time it took to fix your mind so firmly on illusions it's, it's shorter to let it go than all the, he doesn't even tell us how many, how many years or millennium we've been building this, this uh, false matrix, but he's telling us it's going to be shorter letting it go than it was in building it. But it will be uh, uncomfortable at times, and so he's kind of trying to give us a realistic picture of that. So we're, this is our Friday welcoming. <laughs> we're just here welcoming you. And, and I know, Francis, you love this topic. We, we both can talk on this till the cows come home. <laughs> yeah, I do. And uh, yeah, I just also want to um, join David in welcome you all to join us because I know that this probably is the one thing that really um, um, defined this whole journey for me, even even I would say um, when I had the course and studied it, had a study group, facilitated a study group, but it, it's not that part of my uh, journey that defines what this journey is about until I really jump into this um, this style of living. And I, I would say that I had so many questions about guidance before um, really jumping into this life because I thought this is the most un understandable thing based on my frame of thinking. <laughs> like, how is this? I don't understand it. I, I, and I had a lot of questions at the beginning. So really what we're here trying to do this weekend is trying to put in words and have have us all join together in a state of mind to, to tap into a different way of thinking and a different style of living, really. Because I think we all know that just even you joining this weekend is because we know that this practice has to be 
integrated in every single part of our life. It has to be practical. So guidance is the practical application is, you know, as our topic of this retreat is saying, it is a direct pathway to God because this is where we, we cannot just talk about the concept. And, and I, we are reading all of your questions. They're all about how exactly do I apply it in my life? And I feel like behind it is a question that I am ready to use every symbol in my life and to give those symbols over and to have spirit guide those symbols and guide my life in order to achieve a more expansive state of mind. And, and we join you in that, in this weekend. That's yeah. our purpose. Yeah, that's yeah. it. We're, we are so joined. And really, I have to say, your prayers and your questions um, really show the depth that you care about this topic. And um, because you go into so many different nuances about it, like if it's as if it's a diamond, you're like, OK, let's look at all the facets of the diamond. So after we come through this weekend retreat, there'll be a much clearer understanding and, f and feel for the topic of guidance. I remember, I think, Anne um, Farrington um, basically was, we've talked uh, during the week on Wednesday, and, and, and you were saying, oh, I think I'll, maybe I'd like to talk to you, but maybe I'll get my chance here in the weekend. But you, you actually wrote it out. Uh, your one question that maybe that you were having on the top of your head was was one too about going through MMT and watching some of the videos and the audios talking about um, how guidance uh, works through attraction and you were saying hmm I don't know if I actually get that you know it's not like uh, when I'm being guided I'm thinking oh yes I'm so attracted to this is probably uh, some ego resistance and maybe even a lot of it coming up and um, it was beautiful because when you asked the question it started to remind me of, of, of the guidance that I've received over many many years and how in the past it was like the, the David character, the mind that thought it was David basically had had these preferences, these values, these beliefs, these daily thoughts um, in a pretty fixed um, perception of the self-concept, of a self that was made to take the place of the Christ, of a self that had adapted and adjusted to the world. Oh, I mean, there's, there's a grade school, junior high, high school, and then 10 years of university on top, all developing and shaping a self-concept. Uh, which is supposed to take the place of, of my divine reality. And then I remember as I got into the Course and, and started practicing the Course and, and following these inner prompts that I would have, it wasn't so much that I, I could actually see what it was that I was, was attracted to in the guidance, but uh, I experienced a lot of what I would call whims, where I got so focused on the mind training on following my little nudges and prompts that it's as if the Holy Spirit and Jesus know our ego preference system, our ego belief system, and then with Jesus knowing our preference systems, he's like, okay, I got a lot, lot for you I want you to do. I want you to travel. Travel? Hmm. Yeah, you know I don't like to travel. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to speak through you. You know I was voted most quiet in my senior class, and I don't like to speak. I, I didn't have a lot of friends in high school. I, I didn't have a lot of friends in university. And you went to now use me for speaking? Are you, are you crazy? I mean, I, it's like travel and speaking, those are not things that that I would identify as strong points at all. I would say I don't know, I don't know the ins and outs of traveling and I don't know where I'm going to get the money to travel. <laughs> That's another big one. And I don't know about this speaking, let it being used in the speaking function. But yet, 
as I seem to go through the process of traveling, lots of emotions coming up, fears, doubts, oh my gosh, am I going to make it? I'm going to die out on the road. Um, all those kind of things. They, it's like where I went and the foods that were offered to me, the places I was offered to stay, the use our, use our swimming pool, oh I like that, use our tennis courts. Hmm. Boy, that's an interesting synchronicity. You know, all these things that were part of the preference system of David were getting used, but it wasn't David seeking them. I wasn't in my car, okay, the secret, law of attraction, let's manifest the tennis court, let's manifest the swimming pool, let's man manifest uh, the foods that I like, you know, it, which is kind of more trying to use the power of the mind to bring something in from the future that, that is liked, that I'm attracted to, is more like Jesus is like, do the mind training, work on the forgiveness, follow those nudges and prompts, and I'll give you a little whims along the way, like little, little things that you find attractive, and I know you find them attractive, so I'm going to sprinkle a lot of breadcrumbs on your awakening journey with the things that you are attracted to. I saw Kirsten's on, on with us tonight too and she was always attracted to, uh, to water. She, she grew up in New Zealand. Uh, she was attracted to, to water and we would have pools and lakes and oceans and so forth coming in. Uh, ice cream yeah, when we really needed the ice cream, the ice Jesus brings in the ice cream. Because there was, it was part of the preference system, but it's not the focal point of, of the guidance to bring in things that you like. Uh, the ego has just been doing that historically for a millennium. You know, here I'll make a fake, fake world, here's some cheese, just keep, oh, and I'll let you get the cheese every once in a while. But you work hard, earn that money, and go spend it on all the things that you like and prefer, and then just grow old and get sick and die, and then keep coming back and doing the same game, pursuing the, the ego uh, desires for distractions, really, to keep us away from heaven, to keep us from knowing who we really are. So thank you, Anne, for, for bringing that up, because that's one of those nuances about what does it mean to be, uh, that the Holy Spirit uses attraction. It's, it's like the Spirit, Jesus, they use it so that you can really stay devoted to the mind training, to the dismantling, to the, to the undoing, and to the miracles. And then these are like little um, signs and symbols that are like little winks from Jesus, like, oh, I know you like that, did you, did you catch that? How this happened, that happened. I know that that was important in your journey too, because there were these little things, even with the film, you enjoyed films, I enjoy films, Svava enjoys music, but none of us believed I would be traveling, talking about the chorus all over the world, you never believed, you know, really that you would get into filmmaking or use that as a mechanism, and Svava is just working on her second album and, and it's, it's, uh, it's not easy for the ego because it's, she didn't see herself as a, as a writer, a composer, a singer, uh, a, a recording artist, and now doing mixing, mastering, doing like all the aspects including playing instruments that she either had never played, a guitar or a uh, playing the keyboard which she hadn't played for many many years since she was a child. So we're giving you a clue that the spirit will activate and use things that you you may not initially be drawn to, like for me travel and speaking, uh, or it, it can come in, this is kind of the method that the spirit uses to to show us that we can be done through, even though we may think I don't even have a clue how I would do such a thing. If we're willing to be used, then the Spirit will expand our awareness by bringing through these skills, abilities, tasks, 
Uh, it's not really, it's not even about taking our skills and making the skills better, it's more channelizing our skills in the direction of, of loosening from our identity with the body and, and taking us more toward the light. Sometimes people think, well, I have certain skills and abilities, maybe the spirit's just going to take my strong points and make them stronger. It's not usually going that way. Um, the spirit is not big on skills, the spirit is more big on what's the purpose for the skills. How can I channelize all the skills in the direction of forgiveness? Not about taking strong points and making them stronger. Not about having a self-concept and making a stronger self-concept. It's actually designed to dismantle the self-concept. Yeah. And I think maybe it is even helpful to, to just zoom out from specific guidance because when we get into the specific guidance, sometimes we get really caught into, you know, these are the A option and B option, which one? And I, I'm not hearing anything. And if I hear one thing, you know, the ego always wants to come back and assess and ju judge. Are you doing the right thing? But I think really, um, you know, following the spirit, in the end, we realize that it is this, this, um, overall purpose, you know, is, is this really our sincere desire to want to have God's love fill our heart? Is this really the desire of our heart? And is this the only desire of our heart? And if it is the only desire of our heart, then everything in our life is fit into this, then use it, use it to achieve this purpose. And I bet when David, you know, I, I like the, the parable when you say, when you realize Jesus says in the course, you either, you either learn the course 100% or not at all. And you said, okay, then 100%, 100%. And I've, I, I sometimes listen to that parable and I think that is, saying 100% I want to know the spirit and I want to know however, you know, the spirit meets each other, we meets another person, how, how the spirit would, would meet the situation, how the spirit would forgive so that the, the over, overall goal is unwaveringly so that I can have, I can learn love, I can learn, I can have this love um, fill up my heart. And with that being the overall goal, then I can guarantee you everything becomes more like a flow and instead of a, a, a decision by decision struggle. And that's why, you know, when Slava comes here, the music would pour through, but it's not like, she would pray every day, you know, I don't know what, what my function is today. It's like suddenly it becomes given. And it's like when we make a big decision to say yes to God, and we really mean it. And that is what I was thinking, you know, how do we, do we really make different decisions every single day? Or are we making the same decisions over and over and over? And this decision is always that, is this God that I'm choosing? And if yes, then I say yes to whatever form that is gonna come my way and trust that. So, and I can tell you, yes, uh, it's very attractive that when, when we say yes to the spirit, the spirit actually sh wants to shower our, us love in a way with the most little things. And that's why sometimes we use the word attraction because it's like, wow, I can still do that. I can still have that. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like we're so loved, like that was my experience, that as we really deeply commit and say yes to God, then there's usually, a, I, I always say, you know, you get showered with these symbols and these whims, almost just at the slightest, you know, when you make the big yes in your heart, then, then there's a lot of symbols that get used to say thank you. Thank you for, for devoting your life to this. Thank you for pouring your, your heart into this. Thank you for putting your mind energy in this way. And that's really important. And then 
the, the ego always is trying to uh, make guidance into a very simplistic uh, kind of a, a form, simplistic goal that is unattainable in its eyes and then it wants you to feel depressed, discouraged, because many times when the mind, uh, when we're talking about guidance, then people start to think about hearing guidance, and then you say, hearing guidance, what's that? Well, I, I want to, uh, I want to hear guidance, like, like Helen Schuckman mm -hmm. uh, took it down, I want to hear it word for word, it, oh, that's okay if it's rapid, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be patient, I'll, I'll go as fast as I, I want, I want that guidance to be in words that I can follow, and Jesus says that very few uh, can hear the voice for God directly. He even says it's rare. So the ego is setting up a very difficult and rare um, outcome for its definition of guidance. So that there's many of the questions that come in, I, I wish I could hear, the, discern the guidance, I wish I could hear and everything. You know, at the beginning I, I could not uh, hear the voice of Jesus at the very beginning, but I used the Course in Miracles as an oracle. I would just pray and open it up and get my guidance that way. I was like, hallelujah that this, this works. Uh, I don't care if I can hear or not, but I've got this oracle here and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray and I'm going to open the book up spontaneously like an oracle and I'm going to get my answers that way. And then I could also see though that that the ego wants to make this goal about hearing so that you can feel frustrated and really discouraged and depressed and and as Francis was saying, it would like to set up these simple things like, okay, am I supposed to do this or this? <laughs> you see how it's very simplistic. All right, Jesus, give me a sign, you know, do I have to use kinesiology or do I need a pendulum or or uh, do I need something, pick a card or, you know, something like flip a coin, you know, it's, it, the mind is desperate to get that guidance in some kind of simplistic way, where you may have option A and B, which you've just come up with, and now, you know, you, you're presuming <laughs> that it's one of these two. <laughs> and, and so, at the beginning, you know, I thought, I'm not going to get all spastic and frustrated <laughs> about this guidance thing, I think I'm just going to use all of my heart to say, I'm coming to you God with everything I've got, I'm going to give you a hundred percent of my devotion, it's a definite yes, and now I'm going to put it on you. Make it obvious. You make it obvious. If I can't hear your voice, then you make it obvious with the signs and symbols in the world. You make it so obvious that, that I'll, I'll be able to, to uh, see what it is that I'm to do. And I think many of us have had that experience where we, we do pray, make it obvious, and then something happens and it's so striking. Now the ego may not like the obviousness, you know, it may go, oh come on, you can't expect me. <laughs> but there are things that happen that are, are very, very direct and they're like huge signs. Yeah, it's like in, even in today's lesson, I, I want the peace of God. Jesus says, for those who sincerely want this, the how or the mean will be given you in a form that you cannot miss. But if, if that is not the sincere or the sincere desire, then the, the means you will not recognize. So it, he puts it right back to, do you really mean it? And he said, devote the whole day to practice and to, to see whether you really mean this simple prayer, I want the peace of God. So I think, you know, guidance is so, um, sometimes, you know, I remember the, the, the beginning when David talks about his earlier experience when you started to hear Jesus saying, oh, you missed the key or you need to turn right or left when you were driving. It wasn't like you're constantly praying, but it just come like unexpectedly as you're going along, holding that prayer in your heart. I want God, I want to give my life. And then boom, the direction comes and you're like, 
where is this coming from? Okay, I will follow. So it becomes like, um, you know, it's back on Jesus, mm -hmm. exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you lead, I will follow. Yeah. Like this whole guidance thing is on you. Uh, you're the one that has to give me the guidance and, and then I will follow it. So it's, it, it's it, we're just trying to loosen it up from all of these false egoic um, constructs. Like a lot of times, you know, people will say, okay, like, um, there's, here I'll write it down, there's a thousand things that I want out of my life in this world and I would be happy if you could just give me like 10%. Okay, that'll be the guidance. You pick on the thousand things that I want out of the world, you give me maybe 10%, maybe five, I, you know, it's okay. But you just bring those to me and then I'll be happy. And it's like, Jesus is always leading us, is it passing or is it everlasting? Is it temporary or is it eternal? Is it finite or is it infinite? You see, these are the, this is the standard for the guidance because the eternal and the infinite and the everlasting, that's the holy instant and, and the leading us to eternity. That's all about the now. That's not about getting things that we believe we, we want uh, from this world to be happy because Jesus is saying, well actually this world that you made, you invented, you, you believed in the ego, it invented a time-space world, and now you keep looking to these images in the world trying to decide how you're going to get the things that you believe you want and you believe will bring you happiness. When Jesus is saying, none of them, they're all temporary, none of them will content the Holy Son of God. You know, when you decide upon the form of what you want, he says in the Beyond All Idols section, he says, you lose the understanding of its purpose. So really, that's where the whole context of forgiveness and the Course comes in. He's saying, there's nothing, there is no thing of this time-space world that will ever make you happy. He's saying the good news is that God created you happy, so you already are happy, and you have to just remove the obstacles. You have to remove all that you interpose between your eternal spiritual self and the way that you perceive yourself now. So this is not a course in, in manifesting and getting things. It, that can be a step showing the power of the mind. It's not that that, that is wrong, but it's like, it just doesn't go all the way. The secret doesn't go all the way. The law of attraction, they, they have their benefits, they do show the power of the mind, but the real question is, what is it for? Like, if I would manifest and use the power of my mind to manifest, what do I think that's going to get me? Do I really think that will get me happiness? Getting more things, more stuff, more skills, more abilities, when the ego made them all in the first place to keep the mind from knowing eternal life. So I think that's the big key right there. It's, it's, the, it's getting a deeper sense of the context and realizing, well, this journey of guidance will, will help me go through a dismantling process instead of me achieving the ego goals that I had, which is the world's formula for success. I have ego goals, I work hard, I make a lot of money, and I can buy a lot of things that the ego says will make me happy. And the whole thing is a setup. There is never a point when you say, I've accumulated enough. You know, even when you're successful in terms of the world, in terms of education, in terms of money, in terms of acquisitions, stocks, portfolio, possessions, all the things, skills, you know, what you get to that and you still go, is that all there is? You, it's, it's, it's insatiable. The ego has set up an impossible situation so you can never be content by following it. It just leaves you high and dry, it leaves you empty. You know, you work at a company for 40, 50 years and you know, you get some kind of a, a gold watch. 
okay. And then after like 10 minutes, you're like, okay, all right, it's kind of nice, but you know, you don't have a fulfillment from the gold watch. Or, or even if you're married for 50 years, my grandmother and my grandfather were married for 57 years, so when they had their 50th wedding anniversary, it was like a big party. People came from all over the United States to celebrate. But it's not like you get any brownie points in eternity for how many years you've been married. It's more, what was the quality of the relationship? Were you happy? <laughs> Were you, did you feel joyful? Did you feel free? Did it expand your, your awareness in your mind? That would all be a, a good use of a marriage if you, if you actually felt content in the moment and, and you learn to forgive your grievances through the context of the relationship, then that would be a, a marriage well, well spent. <laughs> but if, if you still find yourself where you're dissatisfied, you're, you have nagging doubts, nagging fears, it just means that, that the ego uh, tried to use that relationship to maintain and perpetuate itself in the mind. And so this is, we're getting down to some core things here, but this is all like, this is the context of, of true forgiveness, of really following the guidance in, in a helpful way.